Aloha, and welcome to Talk Story with John Wahe and our very, very special guest this afternoon, Governor David Ige, who is just about to complete eight years as the governor of the state of Hawaii. And I thought this would be a great chance to talk to him about uh, the journey and the uh, what I refer to as the Ige year. So welcome, Governor. It's a, appreciate your presence this afternoon. Um, people out there really want to know uh, what it was like to be governor. So before we do that, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, every, every governor um, gets into focusing in on what they have to deal with that, at that moment and what they've done. But we, they don't necessarily have a chance to tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up in Hawaii. Hmm. So why don't we start with that, you know? Right. Thanks. Tell uh, us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks, uh, Governor. I really uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk story with you. I've, uh, I've always enjoyed the conversations that we've had over the years, and I truly appreciate, um, you know, uh, you've been a terrific uh, supporter and mentor on many different issues. And, uh, you know, like we've discussed, um, there's really no other job like being governor uh, in Hawaii. And I truly appreciated uh, your support and and sound advice from time to time as uh, as was necessary. Oh, thank you. Thank that. By the way, I have said more times than once, and, 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 and maybe I should, that if you're going to be in politics, the best job in the world, or at least in the country anyway, is governor of the state of Hawaii. Yeah. But I think the best place to grow up is in the state of Hawaii. So tell us a little bit about growing up in Hawaii. Yeah, sure, um, John. You know, my um, my family uh, grew up, I grew up in Pearl City, uh, which, you know, is in the middle of Oahu. It was sort of the very first um, community um, in the transition from um, agriculture and sugar and pineapples and the plantations to uh, to urbanization here on Oahu. So the Pro City Community Association was the very first community association anywhere in the state. Oh. Um, yeah, and and you know, Pro City, and you know, today is sort of the heart of the Democratic Party. It was the heart of working people. Um, you know, I come from a big family. I have five brothers, and you know, we uh, grew up. My my uh, parents bought into the very first increment of Pearl City uh, above uh, Kamehameha Highway. So prior to that, yeah, it was plantation community. And then, um, you know, they bought into uh, Pearl City as like the first increment of, um, of the urbanization of Oahu. And so, you know, it was a terrific time, um, you know, uh, post-war boom and everything. You know, my father's a construction worker. Um, my mom uh, was a nurse, a registered nurse first, and uh, then a dental hygienist. But, um, you know, working class people, they work hard. Uh, I have five brothers, six boys. Um, they realized that education really was the key to improving quality of life. And, you know, they sacrificed uh, to make sure that all of us um, could get a good education um, well i tell you you know what what it, what it looks like is that you you have this unique experience of sort of being of seeing the transition of hawaii of growing up in the transition of hawaii because you know as you know there was a time when anything uh beyond kalihi was considered country you know <laughs> if you go west and then pearl city happened and then you were right in the but you, you went to all uh, public schools, I assume, right? Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. You know, and uh, Pro City Elementary School, which is really at that corner of Kamehameha Highway and um, Waimano Home Road, um, which is the main drag in Pro City. But, um, you know, all of my older brothers went to Waipahu High School before um, Pro City was created. And, um, I became, when Pro City High School opened, I was part of the freshman class. So 
I was part of the very first class at Pro City High School. So, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's really an interesting time. I, uh, you know, that was John, before my, H1 was built, right? I mean, before yes, the freeway. Be, before, and, and John, it still was country. I mean, we're Pro City, yeah. it still was country. You know, we didn't have the freeways. So, getting into town took a long a while to go uh getting to the windward side you know was more than a half a day to get over there and you know getting around the island um completely around the island really was a full day trip um and you had to make stops or else it was really not bearable so you know it was an exciting time it was the transition as you said you know from uh, really the plantation era to the beginnings of uh, urbanization and um, modern hawaii right i mean my my father worked on many of the big um, construction projects he worked on each one he worked on the ala moana building when it was the tallest building oh. uh in hawaii you know and uh you know he talked about um the topping off um celebrations and um you know it uh it was a, a booming time, you know, we had six kids, so, you know, in a three bedroom house, so. Wow. There were, wow. There were three. So Anna, you, you, you came, you came uh, with a family already built for a political campaign. You got six. <laughs> yes, most <laughs> definitely. You know, most you, know definitely. I mean, you ended up at the University of Hawaii, right? And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and were you in student government when you were in? I certainly was. I was in student government at both at Pro City High School as well as um, when I got to the University of Hawaii. You know, first I was involved with a couple of um, um, the honor society kind of um, service clubs, um, Phi Eta Sigma and uh, Alpha Kappa Delta. And then, you know, I ran for student government and that and actually that's when I met Don. So we met. Yeah, I was saying, so you. you <laughs> yeah. So bo both of you were running for student government, or was she campaigning for you? Or how, yeah, how no, you it was. Um, we were both running. Um, uh, our joint friend Tim Farr was running for ASUH president, and he had organized um, a party. To, uh, he went out and recruited candidates, and uh, we formed our own party called Pride. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and there were about 15 of us that ran uh, as a collective. You know, we uh, had, we had uh, a logo and, you know, we produced um, materials. We helped each other uh, campaign and canvas and do all of those kinds of things and uh, and and we both won so well congratulations and congratulations for eventually getting married and and then getting in here so okay so you get out of college you got you know, i can see where your values are being shaped uh by growing up in hawaii the hawaii that you and i remember and and, and getting active becoming an activist at the university of hawaii what led to your involvement in politics i mean how do you get to be governor well actually you know john my um i it's not something that i had actually planned for um you know i, I in literally one day and i don't want to take up all your time today but literally one day on the thursday after thanksgiving in 1985 uh, i went from being apolitical and focus on my business career uh, to meeting uh, Governor Ariyoshi and actually getting appointed to the House of Representatives. And, you know, I was, um, I was promoted three times uh, in four years at Hawaiian Telephone. Uh, my goal at that point in time was to be the first local president of Hawaiian Telephone. You know, at wow. that point in time, it was uh, bought out by GTE. Um, you know, they uh, brought in um, chief exec executives from the mainland, uh, you know, all of us local people working, um, you know, really felt there was a glass ceiling that, you know, that uh, we, we um, would not be able to att attain. And so, you know, I was, I, that was my goal. 
to be uh, to be the first local president. But then you end up in the House of Representatives, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, just real quick, just uh, you know, I meet the Jimmy Kuma guy. I I you know I sign up for the party. I I wasn't a member of the Democratic Party. Um, I meet the governor. You know, he asked he asked to appoint me. Um, I checked with my boss because, you know, I was uh, very focused. And at first my boss uh, said, no, uh, they won't support me. Uh, and then uh, the governor calls the president of Hawaiian Telephone. That's the guy's job I wanted. Um, <laughs> and he said it was okay for me to do it. So, you know, and kind of the rest is history. I was appointed and then elected to um, the House of Representatives. Uh, uh, for uh, four terms, uh, so nine years in total, I served in the House, and then uh, I ran for um, the Senate when Eloise uh, Tumpalan retired, um, and, and then uh, became a senator. Huh? Yeah. So now I that now served that twenty years in the Senate. Twenty years. Yes. Yes. Oh my. Oh, wow, I didn't realize it was that long, uh, but 20 years in the Senate, and then you run for governor and you get elected in 19, no. Uh, 2014. Yeah, yeah, 2014. So the last eight years you've been serving as governor of Hawaii. Now, uh, this is so, it's exciting because I think people now get a sense of um, what, what, you know, what shapes, what shapes David Ige's thinking and, and yeah. the like, you know. So you now you're governor of the state of Hawaii. I, I and, and you, uh, what do you, what do you consider your greatest uh, achievement? You know, um, I you know it's always uh, hard to kind of uh, put your finger on any specific one. As you know, when you're governor, you're dealing with a lot of different things. Um, you know, obviously. Uh, the biggest challenge, and therefore that's why I, I think it's one of the biggest achievements, is is really dealing with COVID nineteen, right? I mean, you know, Absolutely. for three three years we've, um, you know, we had an infectious disease. At the very beginning, we knew very little uh, of it. We had um, no way to test for it. We had no treatment, um, and uh, thanks. Thank goodness, um, you know, we uh, are able to develop a vaccine and, uh, and treatments. And uh, two and a half years later, we are still uh, dealing with COVID. But, but, you know, I'm really proud because uh, the Commonwealth Fund had evaluated all of the state in their COVID response uh, and Hawaii uh, ranked number one. And, um, you know, we are the only state um, that did not get overwhelmed by COVID and um, had our hospitals uh, unable to provide uh, services uh, to our community. We're gonna take a short break and we will be right back. If you enjoy watching Think Tech, please consider making a tax-deductible gift to keep us going. Just click on the donate button on thinktechhawaii.com. Yes, click on the donate button on thinktechhawaii.com. Think Tech, streaming great content every day on thinktechhawaii.com, YouTube, and Vimeo. Available on demand on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other social media, and regularly broadcast on Olelo. Think Tech. Video with vision, always learning. Thanks so much for your interest and support. Aloha. And thanks so much for being such a good friend of Think Tech and a member of our Think Tech family. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee and our very special guest, Governor David Ige. We are talking about the Ige years, and we have just been discussing the fact that Hawaii was ranked as the best in the nation 
in terms of its response to COVID-19, you know. And, and uh, we're, as you were saying, we're the only state in the country that didn't experience uh, overwhelming at the hospital facilities and things like that. Yeah, absolutely, John. You know, the, the national average uh, for states were 50 days in uh, last year. Uh, 50 days, the, the hospitals were overwhelmed. Uh, and Hawaii, in Hawaii, it was zero. Um, you know, and, and John, we've talked about before what makes Hawaii special, right? I do think that, um, you know, I, we were on calls every week with governors across the country to talk about what was happening. And, and yeah, I was proud because in Hawaii, when there's an emergency, when there's a disaster, you know, everyone is asking, how can I help? Right, people come together. Right. They understand it's not about personal rights. You know, I have a right to you know not wear my mask and be obnoxious. Everyone is asking, how can I help? Uh, and I really think it it shows in the statistics. You know, and um, you know, and everyone, the business community. You know, when we had to make the tough decision to order the quarantine, and we knew that lots of people would be laid off and, um, you know, the economy would be impacted. You know, we went from the lowest unemployment rate in the country uh, in the end of uh, February to the highest unemployment in rate in the country from, you know, less than 3% to 22% unemployed wow. in the course of six weeks. Um, but you know, the businesses called and worked with us. You know, we, um, I, I chose to involve the county. So I was the only governor meeting with the counties uh, two, three times a week to talk about, you know, what we, what they were seeing, what we think we needed to do. We were talking with the hospitals and the, the long-term care facilities so we could understand what was happening there. You know, we were meeting with the business community. I, I convened um, the hotels and the visitor uh, industry to talk about the challenges they were facing. And, and, you know, and you know, John, Hawaii is one place that uh, you can gather everyone and you can engage them and you can uh, get input. And, you know, when we make decisions, they, were willing to help and implement well, and uh, be I, able to respond. I think I think that that's a tremendous advantage uh, living here. But I think what people sometimes when we talk about the COVID response don't realize that uh, at, a, at, at this point in time, it sounds so mechanical. And yet, when it was going on, what you were really dealing with when you talk about statistics and the like was people's lives. Absolutely. And people were actually dying. You know, and, and it bothers me now when I see some of the people running for office saying, oh, you know, especially uh, across the country or you know, wherever, or even especially in Hawaii, where they're talking about, well, you know, I would have done something different, more like Florida and some they don't realize that that difference might have cost lives. I mean, actual people. I, I mean, that must have weighed on your mind a little bit, at least, or somewhat. Absolutely, you know, uh, John, and, and you know, we have limited healthcare um, resources here in the state. Um, and in the neighbor islands, it's even a bigger challenge. Um, so we definitely wanted to, you know, make sure that we could keep our community healthy and safe. So we were pretty aggressive in, you know, applying restrictions and managing the pandemic, you know, doing what the public health experts had recommended uh, because we didn't want our hospitals to get overwhelmed. And we knew that if that happened, that many, many people would die. You know, it, it was certainly something that uh, the mayors and I talked about all the time, you know, about recognizing that um, we want to be proactive because 
we don't want to get into the situation where our doctors and nurses are having to decide who lives and dies because we we can't service everyone who needs help. Well, Governor, I, I have to tell you something, Dan. I, you know, I've been in that chair that you're, you're in, and, 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 and I obviously know a lot of the other people that have been in it, but I don't think any of us faced a challenge as great as the uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic that, that was going on. And I, I think that that's an achievement you should be really proud of. And uh, we in Hawaii ought to be really grateful. But I, I know that in addition to the pandemic, you also really carved out a niche for yourself in education. And Absolutely. I, you know, I, um, I am a proud um, public school graduate from Pearl City High School. Uh, and first class, right? The first yes, class. the first uh, four-year class. There was a class yeah. that went to Waipahu and then came back to, uh, to Pearl City. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a, a public school graduate and really, um, you know, I talk with many people my age and, and those in the next generation. And, you know, to me, it's uh, really upsetting when they talk about um, being failures because their kids didn't get into private school, you know, right. and um you know they felt like uh if if their kids were at highlands intermediate or pro city high school or moana loa or you know any of those schools that they they failed their children you know and uh and that's not the case you know no uh, we well tell we, us a little bit about your college program i mean that was innovative I, you know that's tremendous Absolutely, you know, and um, Keith Hayashi and um, and Leeward Community College were really critical in in just noticing that you know our kids um, they deserve to be challenged and uh, and um, so they worked through all the details of what courses at high school level can earn college credits and which college courses we can make available to uh, high school students. You know, and, and John, so it's amazing. I mean, Keith wanted every high school student at Waipahu to, to take at least one class, you know, because yeah, it's a much better environment. Their, their uh, peers can help them. Um, you know, he believes every student um, can go to college if they want to. Um, and, and this uh, is a way for people that have kids in the public schools to, to lower the cost of, uh, of college education, isn't there? Absolutely, you know, and uh, that first, uh, we called them Olympians at Waipahu High School, who were the pilot of um, early college, but 13 of them, John, graduated with their Associate of Arts degrees before graduating high school, so they saved their parents at least twenty twenty five thousand dollars, even going to UH Manoa, just you by know, the that's fact that that's something that they are now adopting across the whole country. So this is, you know, absolutely. again, you're right on the cutting edge of of achievements. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and every public high school is offering college credits now. So oh, that's fantastic. great. Fantastic on every island. Yes, well? on every island. Wow. You know, and, and well, you know, I. We, Getting, unfortunately, we don't have as much time as I wish we had. And someday, Governor, I hope you, you do like a, a much longer broadcast and so that people can, you know, get a sense of all of this. But also you had a boom a year uh, this past year or so uh, for doing uh, things for Native Hawaiians, which I, I don't think uh, the public really appreciates uh, what that means, you know. Well, absolutely. You know, we um, appropriated six hundred million dollars, and and governor, I remember when I was chairing Hawaiian Affairs when you were governor, <laughs> and we made that commitment to the Hawaiian homesteading programs twenty years ago, uh, and certainly this past session, six hundred million to accelerate development of homesteading. You know, we um, revised the rules, so we're allowing for subsistence homesteading. So. Um, homesteads uh, as little as one acre and and you know it makes a big difference when when 
um, we were awarding 10 and 40 acres and 200 acres in some instances. Being able to award leases at, at one acre really allows us to reach more uh, families and beneficiaries. And then most importantly, you know, I'm proud that we were able to settle the Kalima case. You know, right. um, it was something that divided our department from beneficiaries and, you know, trying to argue, you know, we didn't want to delay and not provide homesteads, but, um, you know, I'm glad after decades of um, fighting it out in courts, we were able to settle and provide a, a, a fair settlement for Native Hawaiians who I think we all agree spent uh, too many years on the wait list. Well, I tell you, all together, you, uh, it, the Native Hawaiian program's got something on over a billion dollars with the settlement and the, and the Hawaiian homes. I think that's fantastic. We got a couple of minutes well, uh, left. Uh, wh what happens now, Governor? I mean, in, the, in December, you're going to pass the mantle over to a, a new governor. And uh, what happens to Governor Ige and his family? By the way, you have a fantastic family. I wish we had time to talk about them. Oh. But I've met all your children. They're incredible. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, we're just racing to the end, Governor. You know, it's just trying to finish off the, the one or two or 10 things uh, before the end of your term. Yeah, and then Don and I are, are going to take a vacation. Uh, we haven't really decided where yet, but we'll probably take the, the first extended vacation. Uh, we didn't take a vacation at all this uh, second uh, term, you know, and then we're going to uh, sort through our options. You know, we uh, we definitely are not going to retire. We'll be engaged in some way. You know, Don is still an advocate for literacy and, and other um, feeding children and those kinds of things. And you know, I um, I love the technology of today, and so many things are able to be done uh, because of technology, and uh, really trying to help our communities uh, be able to. Well, I, I wanted to say one thing. You know, I, I, uh, for Don, you know, as the first lady, first spouse of Hawaii, I mean, she's uh, her programs uh, to make sure that kids get a healthy meal to start off the day is, is really fantastic. And I, I was so uh, surprised when I learned, well, not surprised, I, uh, and, and I, with admiration that she got to be in some kind of hall of fame of people yes. who have done something yeah. for uh, helping young people. You know, and the grab and go program. Yeah. Yeah, she's been a terrific advocate, um, you know, for ensuring and, you know, she saw it in the classroom, you know, when, when kids didn't uh, get dinner last night, and they come to school and did not have breakfast, it impacts uh, their uh, attention and their ability to learn. So she really has been a strong advocate for making sure that kids can eat, um, you know, it just uh, it in today's uh, communities, it just shouldn't be that our children are, are not able to eat uh, healthy breakfasts and, and healthy meals. Well, that's why, you know, it's interesting is that my wife is still trying to get me to eat healthy meals, but I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but yeah. but in, anyway, Governor, I wish we had more time. Um, I'd love to do this again. Maybe after you, you come back from your vacation, we'll see what, what David Ige is going to do in the future. So thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Yeah, aloha. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Aloha, Governor. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com.
Mahalo.